All right, I'm chatting with one half of Bad Tits, uh, Joshua Reichman. Joshua, what's up? Hey, what's up there? <laughs> Nothing much. So, you guys will actually be touring with Holy F*** this week and uh, Indian Jewelry, in spite of your uh, brand new EP that came out in June, Garbage Night, which yeah. I love. It's an awesome EP. Oh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> it's great. Um... And your, your, yeah, your Toronto show will be at the Phoenix Concert Theatre uh, Wednesday, the 29th. Um, you guys have actually played, like, a few shows so far. Any memorable m- moments? Um, from playing the few shows we've played so far? Yeah. Um, well, I liked the time when we were setting up on stage, and then uh, some band left their keyboards on stage, and then I had to go tell her... Like now it's time for us to play, and yeah. then and then she's a friend of mine, and she was like, "I'm looking for my cell phone," and then I said, "Like, you know, uh, I just gotta get your stuff off stage because it's time for us to play because that's <laughs> how people share yeah. things in the world." And then my friend Sebastian, who plays all the other stuff in the band, he yeah. held the cell phone up and he said, "Look, there's your cell phone," and then she was <laughs> like, "Oh my god!" And then she got off stage. That's one of my most favorite moments of playing music. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm so excited for the show coming up, by the way. But cool. let's talk about the, the EP. Okay, the title, Garbage Night. Garbage Night. <laughs> you want to explain the inspiration behind that? Yeah, it's basically like RoboCop-inspired, mixed with maybe the better parts of the end of Terminator. <laughs> and, no, like the feeling is that kind of feeling, mixed with, like, you know in, in the RoboCop when he throws yeah. the... The guy at the back of the van, and he's like, can you fly, Bobby? <laughs> and then he gets all, like, slimed. He gets covered in slime. Yeah. Uh, like, that's what I picture when, when Smash was like, yeah, we should call it Garbage Might. might. <laughs> garbage Night. I was like, that reminds me of the RoboCop part, so I'm on board. <laughs> so what about the garbage strike in Toronto? Oh, yeah, and then also Toronto stinks. Like, that's true. <laughs> no, Toronto has a garbage strike. It's had two big garbage strikes in my life. One was nine eleven, and then the other yeah. one happened when we made the record. Mm-hmm. And it just it just made sense. Garbage. Yeah, and it was time to uh, finally acknowledge that like we're inspired by yeah. our environment like all the time. So awesome. Well, um, I heard or actually read somewhere that the process in which like the album was made um, in terms of composing and recording it was done in one to two takes. Is that true? Yeah, we just kind of went into the studio and. Um, like we played, kind of played around and found strange sounds and picked instruments that we wanted to stick to for a second and then recorded stuff that was a little like, oh, I don't know how to describe them, but, you know, multi-part written kind of pieces that were sort of songish, and then we recorded them and then just messed around with some, you know, aspects of it later in the in the studio. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, it was pretty spontaneous and pretty... Uh, uh, based on the experience of playing. So the mm-hmm. writing comes from playing rather than overly conceived or anything like mm-hmm. that. Now, the collaboration of you and Sebastian Granger, I mean, I know you guys have worked together in the past with um, with your Oracle band, but uh, yeah. I mean, what brought you guys together to actually form a band? Um, I, don't, I don't know that we were thinking of it as forming a band. I think we were just hanging out a lot because we're friends and then... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, we inevitably we're going to end up playing music sometimes while we're while we're hanging out in our lives, mm-hmm. and then recorded some stuff and sort of thought to start take take form and there was some cohesion even if it's a loosely cohesive and then started to recognize that that was a sound or or a non sound but it sounded like us mm-hmm. and then sort of defined it as a band and then we were like oh let's do something with that and it it was it is continues to be purely based on like wanting to keep it fun and, and totally open to change. So it's not really about, like, we're this kind of band, and here we go. Yeah. Hope you like it, and exactly. here's our mantra, and here's the look, and don't yeah. you buy into this whole feeling? Like, you know, I don't know that we could describe it. I don't want it to be that readily readable. So, mm-hmm. okay. you know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah, definitely. that's sort of what makes it fun for us. Yeah, actually, one thing that I love is because I I'm a fan of you guys individually and like the Tangiers and Death from Above, and I love how cool. every time you guys have new pieces, you guys are creative and you're not the same as your other projects. So uh, that's yeah. that's an amazing thing. It's true. You definitely hear it with bad tits. Um, cool. Now I noticed on your MySpace page, you guys described your music as slush. Like, how would you <laughs> describe your sound or define slush? <laughs> well, the sound has actually changed. Uh, I mean, like 
in keeping with what you were just saying, mm-hmm. uh, and at the risk of being it just being a totally indulgent thing, and I don't think it is if you watch it unfold the way maybe you're interested in or whoever's interested in it. Uh, it the new the sound of us live is not really like that EP. So people can buy the EP and see where we were a few months ago, but where we are live is really just uh, its own thing now, which is a completely different. Well, not completely, but it's it's taken on a. It's taken. It's gone into a direction that's pretty specific, mm-hmm. and it's really dancey. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, that's what I'm most interested right now. Yeah. Is probably in, uh, and I don't even mean dance rock. I mean actual like, just outsider weird dance music. Like you know, that, that's mm-hmm. the intention of it. It's still song based, but there's something there. Mm-hmm. I think we both kind of want to explore that feeling. That's what comes out these days when we're playing. So uh, so live, it's a little bit different. I don't remember what you said, what the question was. But <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's um, what I said. <laughs> Speaking of live performances, I mean, anything that your audience can, like, expect? Like, like how, well, how do your shows norm- normally go down, aside from the dance aspect? Uh, well, it's just, like, uh, you know, it's the two of us, and nothing really gets broken, and no one gets hurt, and... <laughs> Nothing's violent or sad, or, and you don't have to sympathize with me or Sebastian's feelings or our lives or look at us as, as we're just yeah. conduits for um, people to, like, enjoy some strange stuff we've put together. And it's kind of as simple as that. Like, you know, we're not, I'm not trying to, like, uh, manufacture some persona for people. I'm just sort of yeah. in my life doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so when people see it, they can watch people that have spent a long time making music, and this is where they're at. Which is a weird, which is, which is, we've come to a pretty bizarre conclusion. Mm-hmm. And I think it would definitely be for some people seeing the two of us just having refined, like, you know, what instruments we picked and mm-hmm. what sounds we're using is just, you know, in itself its own little ex- exploration. I hope that's what it should be. And, you know, I mean, there's visuals usually. So it's fun. Cool. Um, I actually read in a review, uh, someone had rated your audience participation as excellent. It was kind of like a report card thing. Oh, um, those things. Those things are always weird. I always I actually <laughs> disagree with them. I'll, often I feel like they get it, uh, or sometimes I've noticed they get it exactly backwards. Like someone wrote a review of like our first show, and they're like, uh, and I, I just, I've played bad shows in my life. I've played bad shows. I've been bad. <laughs> I've been crappy on stage. I've, you know, messed up. And I've had those shows reviewed as excellent. And I, that show, we, our first show, yeah. was really, really good. Yeah. And the people, I like, someone, think so, yeah. it was actually, I, did, I just mean that objectively. Mm-hmm. If, well, if you don't like the music, then it was bad. But if you like that music, we were good. And I know when I'm not good. And then the review is like, ah, oh, the anticipation was good, but then mm-hmm. it, they were not good. And I, that was not the feeling in the room. Mm-hmm. The feeling was everyone was completely on board. It's yeah. really funny how you read those things. It's like, that's not the night I experienced. And yeah. I don't mean like wanting someone to like the music I just mean the general experience mm-hmm. was a different one than the writer had so I don't really listen to a lot of that stuff but participation uh, yeah I mean it's, I'm I, I like to be myself I mean if if I like to be vulnerable in myself and play music so mm-hmm. if someone feels that then I'm participating with them awesome well, now, um, I don't know if that makes sense <laughs> well <laughs> Let's lean towards, um, you know, when performing, is there any particular song that you guys perform that really gets the crowd going type of thing? Uh, yeah, there's like our fourth song that's part of this set is, uh, like, it really sounds like really weird. It's really minimal, kind of like, um, it kind of sounds like horror, like horror music, house music. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like horror house. And I feel like every time we've played it, it's kind of when people like recognize what we were doing. Like we stopped sounding like we were trying to, I think people realized we weren't trying to convince them of anything or we weren't trying to put one over on you. And we're not trying to make you think our, we're smart or our songs are about anything, you know, that's melodramatic or big. It's just like suddenly the music is clicking and you can't really... You can't deny that. If you don't like dance music with weird sounds, then you won't like us. But if <laughs> yeah. you do, then you realize that something's happening by midway yeah. through the set. Definitely. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the song, though. But I know that it's the moment when I see people like, "Okay, we yeah. give up. It's dance music. I like it." Yeah. 
Awesome. So excited. I can't wait. (laughs) Um, Now, Kate, I know uh, previously for you, you've done a cover um, specifically for the album Seven Year Itch, released on Paper Bag Records. Oh, yeah. And I know, like, Sebastian, he he does a lot of remixes. Have you guys ever considered doing either a cover or or a remix? Um, No, we haven't considered that yet. Okay. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) That might happen. Oh, yeah. You never know. If you guys could cover a song, do you know what you would want to do? Um, wow, maybe like Superman's Dead by uh, the Crash Test Dummy. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I yeah, that's that's a weird one. Like, maybe maybe I'd cover a song by oh 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 like a JJ Kale song or something because we awesome, really yeah. like those sounds and stuff. So maybe it would be neat to like just admit that we enjoy that and instead of kind of like you know um, ripping it off or something mm-hmm. actually just do it and try to do justice to something there like <laughs> night flight kind of sounds awesome cool um now let's talk about the band name bad tits was that mm-hmm. based on what a bad experience I, i'm curious no <laughs> it's not I, I really actually have nothing to say about the name <laughs> like i kind of don't have anything to say about it, it. just kind of came up and you're like let's name i don't even have that much to say about it really wow yeah that's that's amazing. Like not to it's not an affront to your question. I just I don't I have no comment. <laughs> All right. Um, well, how can for fans that have not heard of you guys yet, how can they access your music? Oh, um, well, we have a we have a seven inch that was made by hand drawn Dracula. It's like a limited seven inch. It's on the orange vinyl, and we're going to be selling those at shows. So when they're gone, they're gone. Mm-hmm. And otherwise. Uh, that's also for download online of mm-hmm. the Garbage Night EP. Yeah. And then we're in the midst of recording um, another EP, actually, like a longer EP that's way more uh, mm-hmm. where we're at right now. And I guess they can go online and just... Don't people just Google things and find... MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in MySpace you can hear like a sample. Also, if you go to YouTube, you can see all the videos. Oh, yeah, made. definitely. Like No Skin and Bangkok Hilton. Yeah, yeah oh. like we've really... That guy, um, uh, Alex... What's his name? From CS, CS guy. He did the video. Oh, Alex, Alex Jones? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you guys will be playing Wednesday night in Toronto, down at the Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a dance band, so, I mean, it's dance music, mm-hmm. so that's that's what the feeling is. Yeah, awesome. And uh, what time do you guys hit the stage? Yeah, we don't know. All right, <laughs> so be there when the doors open, right? So. Yeah, if you're there when the doors open, we're yeah. first. I, I think we're, or, no, maybe we're second. Yeah. I don't know, but don't miss it because we're not going to play a good show with a good sound system in a good place. We don't play it that often, so this is the one to come see it if you're interested. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, <laughs> chatting with me, Josh. No problem. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, good luck with the show and, and the tour and everything. Okay, thanks All a right. lot.